So summer is almost upon us. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, anyway, people sat in Australia are like, no, it's not. And millions of people the world over will be attempting to get shredded. Now, I would say a decent chunk of those people probably just gonna flat out fail. Probably the majority of those people will get like lean-ish, you know, just about see a few abs, kind of lean. And then just a very minuscule percentage of those people will actually get like proper shredded, shredded, as in like 10% body fat and below. Now, I'm not about to say that that should be the goal for everyone, because for most people, just getting like lean-ish, just getting like beach lean, just getting that guy looks like he plays the odd game of fairly intense badminton lean is, you know, the healthiest and most sustainable goal for most people, right? And that still puts you in the top two, probably 1% of physiques globally, right? So it's enough, it's great, it's ideal, right? But what if, just for the hell of it, like maybe out of narcissism, maybe just out of boredom, you actually do wanna hit those next levels and get like proper shredded, shredded. What is the key to reaching those next levels? That is the question that I am obviously about to answer, as you may have deduced from this video title. It's probably gonna be not just one key, it's probably gonna be a few keys, like a, like a set of keys. Let's do it. Now you might be expecting me to talk about calories, cardio, macronutrients, etc. However, I'm not really gonna do that this video and that is because I've made like, I would say roughly, give or take, there or thereabouts, like a million videos that could essentially just be retitled how to get lean and I'll link a few of those below. But instead today, I wanna to focus on really the difference, you know, between just getting lean and getting like shredded. So let me just cover all of that stuff in one fell swoop straight off the bat immediately. And I'll give you the first, probably the most obvious and certainly the least sexy key. That's charades for key to getting shredded, right? You ready? Patience and perseverance, that's two, but the kind of the same thing. Simply put, you get shredded by doing more of what you did to get lean, or just doing the same stuff, but for longer. It's not a separate thing, it's just going further. So you might need to reduce your calories a little bit, you might need to increase your cardio a little bit, or you might need to just keep everything the same, be patient and carry on for longer, right? Fat loss, like muscle building, gets progressively harder the more you do it. That is the nature of a lot of things, right? So a calorie deficit and some cardio to lose fat, resistance training and enough protein to maintain your muscle and then adequate fat intake, micronutrient intake and sleep to maintain overall health whilst doing all of the above. All right, now that's out of the way, I wanna go above and beyond the mere obvious stuff and continue answering the question, what is the key? Z brackets S, plural, to getting 10%, that's an arbitrary figure to be honest for the title, to getting like shredded, shredded. Number one is to understand that you are just visiting. I suppose the answer is in the question, right? What is the key to getting under 10% body fat? And the key word in that question is getting, because I could probably make a video called the key to staying under 10% body fat, but I mean, I might just about get through it, but I, I, I would struggle with some severe inner turmoil, right? Partly because I've never stayed under 10% body fat myself. So that'd be, you know, questionable. Uh, and also, because I don't believe anybody should aim to do that, right? If you really are being realistic about what 10% body fat actually is, uh, what it looks like and what it feels like, then I don't think that anyone should recommend that you try and maintain that for any kind of prolonged period. Under 10% body fat is a place you visit temporarily, right? You got a 30 day visa, right, to Shredville, and when it's up, you gotta go back to, you know, normal town or bit fluffy, just about see one or two abs, shire. What I mean is super lean is just not sustainable and if you try and sustain it, you're probably gonna run into some issues, mate. maybe some health issues, probably some sanity issues and overall your quality of life is just gonna be not, you know, not ideal, mate. Some would describe it as less than ideal. But on top of that, 
if you try and maintain like under 10% body fat or super lean status, then eventually it's probably gonna hinder your ability to actually get there in the first place because for a start, you're gonna feel pretty physically drained and run down. And when you feel like that, it's much harder to stick to and to adhere to a diet. On top of that, the energy levels that you're gonna take into your training sessions is not gonna be ideal, which is gonna make it harder for you to maintain your lifts, maintain your strength. And if you can't maintain those, then it's gonna be even more difficult to maintain your muscle mass. And lower muscle mass means lower TDE, means overall makes it harder to maintain leanness. Really, you're just putting yourself in this self-defeating cycle where you just become like a low input, low output dude, man. So they did this experiment once on monkeys, see if they could increase their life expectancy by restricting the calories. I should probably say at this point that I'm just vaguely remembering this. I think I heard about it once, but I mean, you should probably Google stuff before you go making YouTube videos stating things as fact. So uh, just don't expect this to be wholly accurate. In fact, I expect it to veer quite significantly from, from the truth, but it's just an example, so I'll just go with it. They did this experiment to see if they could increase the life expectancy of monkeys by restricting calories, and so they fed them like the bare minimum to sustain life, I don't know, bite of a banana once in a while and a multivit, yeah? And it worked, right? These monkeys, some of them, their life expectancy increased by like double, right? However, it was the most pointless, like just worst, shittest existence that any creature had ever existed through, right? They didn't do anything, they just sat there, like no playing around, like no nailing other monkeys, none of that, right? Just nothing. Can you see the parallel that I'm trying to draw, right? That's basically what you do to yourself if you try and stay lean forever. Now, obviously that's not a strictly scientific analogy because like you're not a monkey in an experiment, you know, but like the general, you get the gist of it, don't you? You just become this like inactive weak. I, I used to, I've been like shredded for a long time before and like I found stairs quite traumatizing, man. Cause I'm like, oh, I've got to get up these stairs. And it's like, it's difficult, mate. And when you find it difficult to get up stairs, you, you, that's when you got to reassess your energy levels, man. So just don't, don't be one of the monkeys that don't do anything. Number two, this is an important one, especially for the younger audience out there or the less experienced lifters. Build some muscle first, right? I get it. You open Instagram, Joey D stood there, you know, in his 3,682nd shirtless pick, looking kind of lean. Scroll down, more shredded people, open YouTube, titles and thumbnails about shredded people getting shredded and doing stuff while they're shredded get pushed to the forefront, right? Now you could say that's my fault, you could say it's your fault for clicking on it, to be honest, right? But the fact is, people just wanna watch and consume that content more, right? If a bodybuilder does a YouTube series about his competition prep, it's gonna get more views than if he does a series about his off-season gaining phase, right? Because people wanna tune in and see that progress every week more, like they wanna see someone getting leaner and leaner more than they wanna see some 15% body fat dude putting a 1.25 kg plate on each side of his bench press, right? Because it's just, to be fair, it is more entertaining. So naturally, if you're consuming or if you're exposed to this content more, the emphasis gets placed more on like cutting than on bulking or more on fat loss than on building muscle. And so the result is a lot of people think that if you want to look like you know a Gymshark athlete all you've got to do is get lean enough right you just got to do a 12 or 16 week cut or whatever but in reality even though I would say fitness content is probably like 80% getting shredded and losing fat and then like 20% building muscle and making gains the actual time that you spend doing those things should be like more like the opposite obviously 80 20 is just a rough it's just, that's just arbitrary figures, but the majority, do you know what I mean? Should be the opposite of that. If you try and get shredded before you have any real muscle mass, for a start, it's gonna be much more difficult because your TDEE, your typical daily energy expenditure, will be lower, which means you have to go even lower with your calories to keep losing weight. But also, if you do manage it, you do manage to get actually shredded, right? It might not look how you thought it was gonna look, right? It's easier for people 
with more muscle mass to appear leaner than people with less. So somebody with more muscle mass at 12% body fat might still appear leaner than somebody with not much muscle mass at nine or 10% body fat. So I'm not saying don't ever do a cut until you've bulked for like five or 10 years straight. Do you know what I mean? I'm not one of them who says you're not allowed to get lean for Ibiza with the boys, like because you've not lifted long enough. Like by all means, you know, get your little Bieber abs out. Like <laughs> no need for me to be mean as I don't mean any, you know. Uh, by all means, do a little cut, but just like, see it as like a practice run. Just get lean-ish, just get lean enough, that's great, right? And then maybe further down the line, when you've got experience cutting, maybe on your third cut, you know, who knows? You know, it doesn't have to be your third. Once you've got experience cutting and once you've got a bit more muscle mass, then take it a bit further and get actual like shredded, shredded. But your first time around is just not necessary and it's not really a productive use of your time either. I'm gonna illustrate my point with a classic Joey D analogy, wait, I need just, just one second. Okay, right, this is a pendulum, right? It's not, it's a tricep rope. It doesn't have to be tricep, it can be, it's a rope, right? That's not important. <laughs> this is a pendulum, right? And when it's at rest in the middle, this represents you being at your like ideal physique, yeah? So you start off and it's swinging, right? And it's like bulk cut, bulk cut. So you bulk and like, you gain, you gain a nice bit of size on your first bulk, but you're also like way fatter than you'd like to be at this size. So you do a cut, right? And you get like kind of lean, yeah? But you don't really have the size that you'd like to have at that leanness. So you do a bit of another bulk, yeah? And you're a bit closer at the end of the bulk. You're a bit closer to your ideal physique, but you're still like a little bit fatter than you want. Probably not quite enough size when you got down to that leanness. So then you do another cut, right? And then you, again, you get a bit closer and then you like cut, bulk, cut, bulk, cut. And each cut, you finish with a bit more muscle mass, a bit closer to your ideal muscle mass levels, right? And each bulk you finish, not too like far away from the leanness that you wanna maintain. And you gradually, you know, you oscillate about the point and you tend towards your ideal physique, right? And then eventually you get to a point where you can kind of maintain it. You don't really have to do too much bulking, too much cutting. You kind of just float around a great physique and then when you want to get shredded from there you can just do a, just you can literally just blast a few weeks or maybe a couple of months or something but you're going to be there or thereabouts anyway right you're not going to be too far off shredded so oh that made sense i'm going to move on so the final thing i want to talk about briefly is accountability now this definitely doesn't apply to everyone because some sick individuals can actually just get shredded simply because they wanted, right? And just wanted to, and just for the hell of it is, is enough, right? But for most people, that's enough to like do a pretty successful cut and like get kind of lean. But having something to work towards is the difference for a lot of people, right? Having something to aim for is what helps to take them over the line. So for some people, that's an actual bodybuilding or men's physique competition. Uh, for some, it might just be like a holiday or some kind of photo shoot. Uh, for a lot of people, it's probably a wedding. I mean, not like, I mean, wedding is like something that a lot of people lose weight for, but you know, I'm just using an example of, of something that motivates people to make a big change because obviously you don't, you don't need to get like shredded, shredded. <laughs> Imagine trying to get under 10% body fat for your wedding. That seems weird and hilarious to me. People have like sodium manipulation and water depletion for your wedding day, man. <laughs> Fuck me. Feel like pure shit, man. Seven percent walking down the aisle. <clears throat> you get the idea, anyway. Uh, you know, like I said before, the further you get into a cut, the harder it gets. And so, for a lot of people, having something there to be that kind of motivating point to look towards, the accountability at the end of all the date to work towards, uh, is really a useful tool to get them there. And if you can find something to play that role for you then you know it's really gonna help for me honestly the only time i have ever ever been like a hundred percent strict and consistent with my cutting calories with my actual diet and everything else the only time is every january when i do a mini cut video apart from that i i literally go over my calories like once a week minimum when i'm doing a normal cut minimum once a week right i'm not i'm not exaggerating right and so the only reason I do it for this mini, mini cut is because I say like it's going to be 10 days or 14 days. And I know that at the end of it, I've got to film a clip 
and put it on YouTube and be like, right, this is the difference. And I know people are gonna still say, there's no difference or whatever it is, right? Or just say like the first one, you're not tensing, whatever, right? But I've got that accountability. Anyway, I don't think I need to labor that point too much. I think you get that one. So I'm just gonna summarize and go through uh, everything I've mentioned really quick. So number one and one B, perseverance and patience. Number two, liking my video. Number two, understanding and accepting the transitory nature of your visit to Shredville. Number three, build some muscle first. Number four, try and introduce some kind of accountability. So I hope that helps you if you do choose to get ruthlessly peeled and diced to the socks. I don't know what that even means this year, but if you don't, if you just choose to get like kind of lean, leanish, and if you choose to skip the court altogether and just keep bulking, or if you choose to do none of it, that's fine as well. I mean, you should, you should do something. Don't do nothing. Do something. See you later. Like me shit. Bye. Jordy Lenny is my hero.